you see that typically retired NFL players, you know, obviously you have a much lower risk. I think it's 45 or 46 percent lower risk of cardiovascular events. And then we get the subset of linemen that are 50 plus percent increased risk. And to your point here, when you know, I got a lot of clients who play football and rugby and and these guys, their profiles do look great when we look at their blood pressure and we look at, you know, triglyceride to HDL and some of these biomarkers. But the question is always, well, after retirement, you know, this is where we get into trouble on a couple of fronts. The first is when we're looking at just what you described here, obviously weight loss is still going to be a key part of this whole story, no? Yeah, for sure. And I love the example of the offensive and, and defensive linemen or some of these other sports where you need a higher weight to be really competitive in it. Because one of the things that happens when they're still active athletes is their exercise is super high, right? Yeah. Like you're three hours a day sometimes, you know what I mean? These guys are going, 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 going. And muscle mass too, right? Oh yeah. I mean, just profound muscle mass because they're working out all the time. They're keeping that. And it just creates this really protective environment so that they don't have those negative biomarkers and you hit it right on the head, right? You Okay. But then they have retirement. And so then all of a sudden you have this situation where you don't have that intensive exercise. And even if you adjust your diet and you, you maintain your weight, so you're not gaining too much weight, or maybe you even lose a little weight, that activity is just plummeted. And that's, that's where you can get into this risky area where now maybe you're going to develop that more unhealthy phenotype. And the reason we believe that would happen is because of that underlying concern with just having that excess adiposity 